Today's video is going to be about tips and tricks of wet bay. Uh, all of the different gadgets and things that we use, but I want to start out by apologizing to Sue because Sue, I have to tell you that last night I was laying in this very bed right next to you and I was thinking about someone else. What? It's true. You're actually going to say that on camera? Yes. Good God. I was no. thinking about our subscribers oh. and I was thinking about our viewers. Oh, okay. I can't tell you how many times I've laid in this bed and I thought about things. Oh, I should tell somebody this. Oh, I should tell them that. And let me get over here underneath the bed. One of the things that I bought a long time ago, and we have not used it in an emergency mode yet, but it's all set for backup, is this thing. This here is the smallest, lowest power, metal, bomb proof, tip, uh, switched to turn off heater that I could find that would serve as our backup plan if our heat ever went out and we were in danger of freezing our water tanks. Now obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, in ultra, ultra cold weather this would not do the trick. But conventional wisdom all the time is that you can heat your wet bay with a 100 watt bulb on the end of a, a trouble light. And I'm here to tell you that's wishful thinking. This thing on low is 800 watts, I believe. And that is uh, fairly low for heaters. And the fact that it's metal and the body of the hot area is suspended in something that has some airflow through it, um, and it's got a nice long cord and on it everything. I felt fortunate uh, to find this thing and I did a fair amount of searching to get the, uh, the dimensions right. Come on Sue, let's go outside. I'll show you quickly what I, uh, I am trying to accomplish this and why it's important for somebody to carry. You can uh, pretty much apply it probably for any RV, but in particular, Numar owners, this thing fits perfectly underneath the wet bay plastic wall. Come on, I'll show you. So I think the first thing you're going to notice is that this video has actually been a long time in the making. It was filmed in three different locations, probably five different days, starting way back in October when we left Wisconsin before we went to Florida. And then uh, a little bit was done in Indiana when we were on our way down to Florida. Now we're in Florida, we're actually going to be heading back up to Wisconsin pretty soon, but uh, I'm trying to finish up one last segment here we got beautiful weather here and as luck would have it we have a weed whacker in the background <laughs> on any of the uh, motorhomes that have any amount of storage space down below it's important that this stays heated because there's a lot of chemicals and a lot of different things in here. And you can see that there's a bottom and this bottom is actually insulated. And that whole area in there will stay snug as a bug and you won't have a problem unless of course you have a problem with this. And on our Numar, this is the Oasis Hydronic Heating Module. Now this is the furnace for our motor coach. If this furnace were to ever go, we do have an electric heater that we have. It's a rather tall one, kind of a cheap one, you know, about a 40 buck or something like that. And we've used it periodically at places when we wanted to get supplemental heat. Not, not that we really need it, but uh, the supplemental heat you can get from that kind of for free because if you're paying for your electrical, you might as well plug an electrical heater in. But that is to heat the inside. If that furnace there ever stopped running in our wet bay, we could have a problem. Because Sue, I don't know if you can 
uh, sneak in here because you don't have a Fifi and I do. But up above here where my finger is, there's a radiator. And this radiator that's in there, if you can see there's a little black wire hanging there with kind of like a little uh, stem on it, that's a thermostat. So, so what happens is if this area ever starts to get cold, that thermostat picks up the message, starts that radiator, and kind of keeps this area, this bay here, from this end to the other end of the rig are my water tanks. It's my black tank and my gray tank. And the beauty of what this thing is, is that, and I've got it sized, normally I don't have this in here because we have not needed it yet in three years. But I didn't want to get to the point where the day I finally needed it, I was scrambling because it took X number of days for me to find this and then I had to order it. But this heater is the perfect size that fits barely underneath here. And if I take all this junk out of here and I hook that heater up, I can have it in an area where I'm not melting anything, I'm not screwing anything up, but I'm getting the maximum amount of heat, I mean a stinking 800 watts, to be able to keep this warm enough so that I can get either an RV tech here to help fix my furnace, or Sue and I can get a new plan to pack everything up and get on the road to get to a service place. This little heater will buy us the time. Where does it plug in? This heater, um, I could either run the cord through and plug it on the other side of my rig. I have some convenience outlets, but that's probably not the way you would do it. You'll notice that my power cord is coming right out. It's in the bay next to me, and the power cord typically goes over to a pedestal. Well, anytime you plug into power and you have your 50 amp or you have your 30 amp that you're plugged into it, you almost always have also a separate 15 amp line and you have also paid for that power if you choose to use it. So I would probably run the cord out through here with a short extension cord over to the power pedestal and I would power this. So once again, we've never needed it, we got it. If I never need this thing my entire life, I'll be the happiest guy on the planet. I'm gonna do a little segment on my favorite sewer hose. I won't take a lot of time. But first, I wanted to show you my favorite gloves, which I have on. The Venom Steel Rip Resistance. I end up getting these uh, actually at a big box store called Menards when I'm in Wisconsin. But I couldn't find them at a few places, so I defaulted to you know what, Amazon. I'll put a link in there if I can remember. Really great. They don't rip. They're easy to put on. They got a nice white inside. They don't have powder in them, so I like them. The only reason I'm taking the time to show you this is that these two sewer hoses I've only used about three times. Uh, I thought they were really quality. It's the Camco one. I will put a link uh, or a little card to show you this so you don't buy it. I don't like them. Um, Why is that? When I first bought this, I thought I would have some relief being able to put this bayonet mount on because you'll know how this is cut here. It's got a, uh, a bunch of reliefs here that actually make snapping this on a little bit more reasonably easy. Well, guess what? Because it's reasonably easier, it also unreasonably leaks. And it doesn't leak much. It's, you know, just a drop or two. But when you've OCD like I am, I mean, I even line up the alphabet. It's got to be CDO. And it just, uh, it bothers me. Plus, it is probably against the bylaws of most campgrounds that you have to have zero leaks. Somewhat unrealistic, but I try to do that, especially because we mostly camp in parking lots like the one we're in right now because we're tourists we're not campers uh, so it's a lot more obvious when you have a leak so Sue why don't you zoom in here a little bit the, the beauty of this hose I thought at first was that how nice and compact it is and you just stretch it into position and no matter what I did I would uh, have the little dams uh, that would hold the pipe up 
and position it properly and when I would send the fluid through it just kind of snakes around mm -hmm. and goes where it wants to go yeah. and it's just not nice. The one that I'm going to show you is a pleated one. I didn't know what was good when we first started but yet we've gotten almost two years out of that thing and now I needed a replacement so I went to a couple of stores and something didn't look right on them. They, they just didn't they were the pleated kind that would expand or accordion down, but they just didn't seem right. I came back and sure enough, the brand I have is, uh, starts with a V, I'm not going to pronounce it wrong now, I'll show you later when I show the actual box. And sure enough, it's more expensive. I had to order it on Amazon because, you know, unless it's a really big store that sells all sorts of different brands, they just pick one and they always end up picking the cheaper one and you know how that usually turns out. So. Uh, the other thing uh, I'll show you a little bit later is I'll show you the filter wrenches that I use. I use filter wrenches, oil filter wrenches from uh, Sears Craftsman. They have the perfect teeth on it. They open up real good. And for us older folks that have trouble undoing these, once I got those and I got that uh, from a tip from another RV, or I wasn't smart enough to figure it out, but I put them babies on there and I unclamped them and that's my mission in life to tell people with uh, grip problems and arthritis that that's what they have to do. Well, we're in uh, an RV park, uh, the uh, West Dallas Wisconsin State Fair RV Park, and as you can tell by the hat, it's a little bit cold here. And we actually changed our travel plans. There was a lot of uh, fooling around with uh, Trip Wizard, but we're gonna leave one day early. But one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about this sewer sock, and I got a brand new one. But this particular gadget here is got a stainless steel mesh here, and it actually is to prevent critters and things from going in here and coming in this giant gaping hole that you have here. And I've been using this for over two years, and you can see now it's finally starting to get stretched out. And it's cheap enough, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's cheap enough that, uh, and I like it enough that I'm replacing it. Now, one of the things that I don't like about this thing is after you fish it through in the proper order before you hook your hose to your connection is that it seemed that a big enough animal, if it really wanted to come through here, it might be able to push this up. So what I did was I measured that I needed about 20 inches of chain or something heavy to hold this thing in. Now when I went to buy the chain, it was more than 20 inches and I just bought the whole thing and I haven't gotten around to whack it down to the right dimension. The other thing I wanted to show you was I was given a tip by a previous RVer about these wrenches. Now you can buy the plastic wrenches that you can get from Camco and the reviews on them, people say, oh, they snap the first time you use it. And I'm thinking, come on, they couldn't possibly design something that bad. Guess what? I bought the plastic Campco wrenches. The first time I used it, they snapped in half. Now, I have had carpal tunnel surgery on both of my wrists. I'm uh, 67 years old. Sue probably could take the hoses apart uh, with one hand, but I need four hands. So. Once I got these wrenches, the job became infinitely easier. I'm not going to disconnect it, but I'm going to show you how it works. Let's go over here, Sue. So the most important thing when you're trying to take these connections apart is to have a Fifi. But you all know that. And the beauty of these wrenches, and I'm not going to disconnect it because I'm kind of not ready right now. And the reason I'm talking about the hoses later on when I get in the rig is you can see that this one has a slight leak. And it's kind of irresponsible to keep using a hose that consistently leaks. I've gotten over two years out of this hose. I'm so happy with it, I ended up buying replacements. A couple other ones that I've you know, mixed and matched since then, I didn't like as much. But the beauty of these wrenches is they have jaws that are adjustable. So you, no matter what size hose you have, you can get it on one side and then if you have this side adjusted on the other side, you can see how easy this would be to be able to twist it apart. We don't put anything on our channel that isn't something that we use and like. I've bought plenty of things that I don't like. You'll never see that on this channel. You'll see it in the garbage. <laughs> so one of the best tips I can give an RV newbie is to don't think 
that your memory is good enough to be filling water either to your fresh water or filling water into your rinse tanks and you're going to remember it you're not i mean we've been at this two and a half years and i've avoided uh calamities only because i have these timers now i'll, I'll let sue zoom in on these timers i'll have uh, uh links to these later this black one here in my left hand i actually do not like and i do not use it anymore it just i couldn't hear it well um, because of my 67 year old ears and i found this timer here that is almost perfect but not quite uh, this timer here when it, and it's a countdown timer so you will become experienced on how many minutes you need for instance to fill either your fresh water tank or how many minutes to fill your black tank and then you can modify that uh, this timer here actually vibrates it blinks and it beeps and someone like me needs that. If this had an attachment where a two by four would come out and hit me in the head, I would buy that attachment. Now, uh, this timer is almost perfect. Why isn't it perfect? Well, it isn't perfect because these buttons are somewhat easy to bump. And if you bump them, it stops the timer and then you could have a real problem. This timer is cheap enough. If anybody decides that they can't find anything better than this, I would suggest you buy two of them and then you hang two of them around your neck. And if you bump one of them, you're certainly not gonna be bumping the other one. Now when you bump it, you can hear a little beep, but I don't hear that beep sometimes. So what I usually do is I'm kind of always looking at this and because it's hanging on your neck, you, uh, you kind of know that. If anybody out there finds a timer that vibrates blinks, beeps, and has the buttons protected better, please drop us a line and I will end up buying those and tossing these. The last tip I want to talk about, and it seems silly, but it's these quick disconnects. I can't tell you how much trouble these have saved me not having to disconnect this connection all the time and have it eventually leak and wear out, and likewise with this. The 90 degree elbows that I put on took the strain off the hoses. Uh, it makes it so that this joint is not uh, a joint that's going to be wearing out just from the frequency you're using it. Uh, this just is a protective cap that I put on when we're, when we're driving, but normally a hose would be hooked to that and it would be come down through here or a hose would come down through here. Setup is leak free and super quick they make them in uh, versions that are drinking water safe so you want to make sure you get those one last tip i'm remembering these as i'm talking through this i used to have both my hoses come in here and i would hook up to my fresh water supply which obviously you always need but i would also have my hose here for my rinse and then over on the other end i have a y connector and i would turn that on when needed well, what I noticed is that in these RV parks, there's a lot of little kids and things running around and sometimes they walk over to these water va uh, valves and they flip things and, you know, normally that would be okay, but if that line is always hooked up to my black tank, which can fill my black tank, the vent for the black tank is on the roof and then you'd have black tank stuff coming out of the roof. So I've since changed my ways I always disconnect my rinse hose when I'm done and I never put it through here. I always go over the door. So obviously if I ever shut the door, I'm like, what the heck? Oh, I forgot to take my uh, rinse hose off. And I just have it draped here and I put a cork on it so nothing can crawl inside of it. Another tip for newbies is this. Now this particular uh, spigot right here is very high. So you don't have problems with animals uh, deciding to use this as a fire hydrant but normally they're low and we've already went to some RV parks where as unbelievable as it sounds they were underground there was a lid that you had to open and sometimes the spigot was down in a soup and I can't believe that they can get away with that and it be legal but normally they're low and you certainly want to spray them just from the animals and things that uh, might be using it as a fire hydrant 
but the other corker that we've seen uh, when we first started, we saw people that when they were all done putting their sewer hoses away, they took their sewer hose and literally put it on the spigot and flushed it out because, you know, what do they, what do they care? They're leaving. So we've gotten to the point now, and we're not going to hook up now because we're actually unhooking, but we've gotten to the point where we use like a Lysol uh, with bleach. And we'll come up to these spigots before we use them and we'll spray the knob and the whole spigot and the threads and everything just so that we don't end up getting some weird disease. Sometimes we'll even spray the end of uh, what we're attaching to it. Now, I wanted to show you this. This particular valve here is awesome because the gauge itself is oil filled, so it's not dancing all over the place. It's got a adjustment screw here that I can dial this in to whatever your rig says is a good safe pressure. Now on our Dutch Star, uh, we're good for 60 PSI. In the beginning, probably the first year, I was always at 40, you know, but now I'm more like 45, uh, 48, something like that. I kind of don't want to go over 50 because I was a mechanical engineer and I don't believe engineering ratings. But this is our second one after two and a half years. I don't know if I froze it or whatever, but the volume of water that's going through here and the quality of the water, I was okay with that. Um, the uh, Y valve that we use, I bought a metaled body one. It says Two Ways Pro. And remember, many times we're giving you pro tips. Uh, so it's a pro unit. And this one here with this little tab is the one that I always hook up to my flush valves and this is our fresh water side. You'll see that I have also on each one of these, I have those little backflow preventer valves. Many times in the parks, they also have backflow preventer valves, but sometimes they do not. So today is October 31st, 2019. Seemed like a good day to tape this indoors. It's snowing outside. We just learned something uh, about our RV Dometic awning that automatically folds up uh, when it gets too windy. Apparently it all automatically folds up when it gets to be 32 degrees. And guess what? It's been folding up today, so I had to troubleshoot that. But this is the last segment that we want to tape about uh, our sewer hose equipment. And this is the hose that I had previously hooked up outside. It's a Dominator uh, 20 foot hose kit. Uh, that, I believe, is the one that we had originally when we got the RV. We bought it used from a previous owner, and that's what came with it. We used it for a very long time. You can see that I liked it enough that I actually bought two sets. One of them's on now, and this one has yet to be used. So I'm able to play with it indoors here without having gloves on. So one thing I like about this hose versus any of the other ones is literally when I put it away I will when I'm all done with it I will end up connecting it together like this and it will be literally this small in our uh, bend um, but that's not the only reason why I like it it seems that uh, it just holds its shape a lot better when fluid is going through it because it is so rigid and because it will hold its shape in most of the sections depending upon the length that you need and nothing's worse than when you're sending a slug through and the hose is flying around like it's got a life of its own and you're wondering if it's going to whack itself off the connection back at the sewer come over here what sue um, one thing about this hose is that many times you have to take this sewer connection which has these multiple threads, or it could actually end up just being a friction fit. You can see that there's a slight slope on here. But at any rate, many, many times you put this in the threaded connection, and you're thinking, oh, great, I'm picking up a thread. Oh, boy, and you're just about ready to have a party, and it ends up stopping here, and your rig's over on this side. So, you know, you don't want your hose going around the corner this way. So you'll fool around and fool around and, get it how you want to get it, but many times you're not able to aim this at your rig where you need it. 
So then what happens? So then what happens is many times your hose will be taking a trip over towards your connection and it might have, it might be laying such that it's got a twist in it that would have a propensity, for instance, to unconnect it. And it's when it has a little bit of a twist in it on, on some of the designs of hoses that it can actually be a, a tragedy waiting to happen that if it finally decides to untwist when you're sending a slug of fluid through it, you could have a problem. Why don't you come a, a close up over here, Sue? The way this one works is no matter how your hose comes to this connection, when you finally get to the point where you're going to marry these two together, this part of the hose can remain stationary, which is indicative of this collar and the hose and this outer section here. And literally, this collar in the middle here, this can rotate. So the set of this hose will never have to be compromised. However it's feeling that particular day and how it wants to sit, these pins can be rotated. However this has been twisted into the ground and it ends up over here, you can finally marry them up and you can rotate this inner ring to where it needs to be. Marry them up without any uh, pre-loaded twist in the assembly and then you can tighten it and you're tight and ready to go. And so that's what it looks like. The last thing that I want to show you that you should carry are spare blade X valves. Now why would you want to do that? How many times have you not bought a snowblower and you need, needed it 50 times during winter and then the next year, you end up buying one, and it doesn't snow at all. That's what you want these for. You want to buy these things so that they never fail on you, and you carry them around. I don't remember how much they were. I'll have it uh, down in the descriptions, uh, links for these things. Obviously, I carry spares. I don't want them to fail. I'm actually going to have these replaced in about a month and a half when I'm at National Indoor. Just because they're starting to get hard to tug on now, I've seen things online where people drill holes into this chamber here and they thread it and they put a grease fitting here. Now if I still had a sticks and bricks, for the cost of one of these, and I don't remember what it is, I would probably buy one. I used to have threading. Uh, equipment or I'd buy a little pipe tap and put it in here and I would try putting that grease fitting in there but since I'm on the road I'm not going to go down and drill something I, I don't have the right equipment anymore but it just makes sense that if you did have a successful installation of a grease fitting in here the blade that's in here comes and hides in this cavity when your uh, uh, fluids and things come through here and if this whole chamber can periodically be greased up and then you slide back through here, I can imagine this thing just working wonderfully. Let me give you another pro tip that I didn't pick up on until I ordered this. You'll notice that I have two different colored handles. This is a one and a half inch Blade X valve by Valtera. Almost all OEM equipment seems to be this company, these Blade X valves. They're, they're pretty simple, stupid, bomb proof. But you'll notice that this handle is gray. Sometimes they're black, but this one's silver. And it's die cast. And it says that it's a pogne in metal. Oh, I meant metal handle, three inch blade X. So unintentionally, I bought a metal handle one, which I think is way more awesome than the plastic handle one that I have, especially when you see that the threads here are kind of sticking out a little bit so you wonder you know when I open this up am I gonna twist another turn on there or whatever but in my description and we're an Amazon affiliate so if you would end up buying this I'd make something on you I don't know what it doesn't cost you anything uh, help support our channel so we can uh, bring uh, videos like this to you 
but I only put the metal handle ones in and that's what I'm going to get next time because once I install these I'll probably get another set so I can carry them. Since we've used this hose in the past I don't know why uh, a particular thing happened here. I don't know if anybody picked up on it but back when I was uh, outside showing the wet bay where I was showing how the sewer uh, sock that we use works when I attached it, I kind of hesitated because I'll show you what I didn't like. These particular fingers here on the uh, hose that we have, which is in fact uh, this right here. These fingers, when they go on this part of the hose in my rig, that's how I attach to my rig. This is to attached to my RV and I always attach to here. I leave this connection in place and this is the one that I'm working on all the time. Well, lo and behold, this outer diameter that's shown here, it didn't look like it was sized properly because the one that's on my rig now, the plastic one that's on my rig now, it looked like I had too much of this going on and then these posts wouldn't engage properly with here. Now I can tell you that in the past I've always told people that you don't mix and match your sewer hose products and I find it a little odd that I had the Valterra hose before and I was using the one that's on my rig right now and I never had an issue. Um, I've since ordered two of these clear Valteras and I'm expecting this to fit to my rig uh, properly and then I'm expecting this to fit to the Valterra 90 degree properly and if it does not I will talk about it further in this video but I'm thinking it's just a mix and a match and I don't know how they change these diameters they're always trying to improve this connections for people like me with carpal tunnel surgery kind of a weak grip when you get older so I'm gonna take them at the word that that is gonna be my connect my correct setup here so we don't need the extra hose that uh, we ordered at this point. So we decided to have an intercom system where, for instance, if I want to talk to Sue in the uh, bathroom in the back, I can talk to her there. But if she's in the kitchen, I contact her this way. But then if she's outside, I have to use the outside one, but the most important one is if she's in the driver's compartment. So between all these, I can keep track of her and it's a lot easier than our intercom or excuse me our walkie-talkie system which the batteries aren't charged half the time so okay so I'm uh, just about ready to go right now so let's get going <laughs> 